Siamo a Venezia per provare una novità destinata alla mobilità. We're in Venice to try a new model proposed for water mobility. Although this story started a few days ago in Crossholmen, Sweden, over a thousand miles away from here. Siamo al Marine Test Center di Volvo Penta a Crossholmen. We're at the Volvo Penta Marine Test Center here in Crossholmen because they worked to design new products for roughly 300,000 man hours and have tested them for 40,000 man hours. And we want to know what this is about. Due nuovi motori. Two new engines, the D4 and D6. Il D6, 6 cilindri in linea, 5,5. The D6 5.5 liters straight six engine can reach up to 480 horsepower. Il D4 ha adesso una massima potenza di. The D4 has a maximum output of 320 horsepower. Both were developed exclusively for nautical use. Questa imbarcazione è la Sargo 33. This boat is the Sargo 33, built in a Finnish shipyard, equipped with two Volvo Penta D4 engines, 320 horsepower each, linked to the new generation DPI propulsion. Grazie a questo sistema di trasmissione con frizione. Thanks to this drive system with a hydraulic clutch, we can take advantage of the dynamic positioning system, which keeps the vessel pinned on a specific location. DPI is for sure for, for pleasure uh, and I mean uh, we have been dominating with the, with the stern drive since, since many many years and the concept of combining uh, a dual prop and uh, a compressor supercharged engine is a perfect match. So uh, I mean with the new output now on the, on the DPI uh, having D6 440 and the D4 320 I think we're going to have a perfect match uh, when it comes to power. And then if we look at the comfort side, I mean, by introducing the electrical steering as well as the hydraulic clutch, that will be, a, uh, I would say, a, a, a very attractive package for the, for the uh, booter when it comes to easy booting. Uh, I'm thinking about the improved joystick maneuverability. I'm thinking about uh, the low speed we are introducing by slipping the clutch, as well as the very smooth uh, engagement of the, of the gear back and forward. So a really, really nice package. C'è un'altra funzione molto interessante, low speed. Grazie a questa funzione, anche manovrando con... There's another interesting function called low speed. Thanks to this, piloting this craft feels very smooth, even when using traditional levers. And piloting these vessels at low speeds is of great benefit to junior captains. Through Easy Connect, we can interact with the boat through a tablet or a smartphone. Si possono vedere tutti i dati, tutti quelli che vengono rilevati dalle centraline elettroniche di bordo. We can look at all the data those collected by the electronic control units aboard. We can look at the navigation map, our routes, we can read information on the engines, and in addition, we can read our average fuel consumption, the average speed, and diagnostic alerts. E in più, la diagnostica, eventuali malfunzionamenti, allarmi, ma anche semplicemente... Such as malfunctions and alarms. And a general check can be performed and sent via email thanks to this tool. Adesso però, we're now moving a sea to cruise a little. Non male in accelerazione. The acceleration isn't bad, from 0 to 20 knots in less than 6 seconds. Once we reach 20 knots, the average fuel consumption is roughly 62, 65 litres per hour, which is to say 3.3 litres per mile. Let's read some data regarding the noise at this speed. We're under 70 decibel. It's really rather quiet. Let's move a bit quicker. 26 knots, 2,600 RPM. The consumption data... 72 litres, and we went down to 2.8 litres per mile. 
what we have done uh, to, to increase the power, uh, actually we have, we have redesigned 85% uh, of the parts in the engine. Uh, but the major uh, equipment that, that affects the power is the, the fuel injection system. Uh, that is totally new. Uh, so we have a, a common rail system from then, so with a higher pressure and so on. With, so we can have a more efficient injection, uh, saving, saving fuel but also giving more performance. We are very much within cruising speeds, but let's accelerate some more. 3,000 RPM, well above 30 knots, 31 and a half, 32, we're still around 2.8 litres per mile. And now we step on the gas. We're letting the trim assist help us calibrate the stern drives. We're at 37 knots, 38 knots of maximum speed. The maximum total consumption is 130 litres per hour. OK, the performance isn't bad at all, but this isn't enough. Quello che vogliamo anche sapere è quanto possiamo fidarci di questo impianto di propulsione. Cioè, what we want to know is how much can we trust this engine? How reliable is it? And furthermore, given how expensive boat engines are, how long will it last for? To answer these questions, we decided to ask an expert who uses his boat for multiple hours a day and uses it in a city characterized by an intense traffic. In una città dove il traffico è molto congestionato. Thirty million tourists come here each year, contributing to the traffic in the canals of this city. And we chose to join the Prince. Io sì, sono veneziano, veneziano. Mio padre ha fatto il gondolier. I'm Venetian. My father was a gondolier for many years. I somewhat betrayed the oar in favour of an engine. Watch your head, boys. Il motore, mi raccomando la testa, ragazzi. Io ho cominciato il 13 agosto 1980. Started on August the 13th, 1988, to be exact, which means this year. 31 years. Yes, it'll be 31 years this August, which means you lived the whole Volvo Penta Duo prop experience. The Volvo Penta Duo prop basically was a revolution, a revolution here in Venice, and also was the spark that ignited my faith in Volvo for all the years I worked. We're here now and you're running a very tough, very important test for the Swedish manufacturer. What is it about? Questo è un nuovo motore eh, denominato D4. Sì. È un motore che può sviluppare This is a new engine called D4. It's a very powerful engine, but it has been modified to fit 150 horsepower specifically for Venice due to the very strict legislation. We can't exceed 150 horsepower in public transport due to the wave, due to the waves for security reasons, etc., etc. E inoltre abbiamo un sistema eh, di piede poppiero con delle frizioni che And in addition, we have a stern drive system with specific clutches that allows you to spin the propeller at a rate well below the minimum engine revolutions. Il motore. Il problema primario a Venezia sono i limiti di velocità. Giocando un po'. The main issue in Venice is the speed limit. By using the slow speed function, we managed to stay below the speed limits without shifting gears, as we have been forced to do until now. Noi riusciamo a rimanere sotto i limiti senza avere bisogno di attaccare o staccare la marcia come si faceva un tempo. A proposito, ma quante ore di lavoro fa? On that note, how many hours does a boat like this work for every day? We can approximate 10 hours of work a day. Let's approximate a yearly rate. How many hours does this engine work for in a year? I'd say we can hit 2,000 hours a year, around 2,000 of engine spinning. 2,000 hours of work. Those a yachtsman does in, oh, I don't know, 10 years. There really is a lot of traffic here. 
We're in Rialto. It's the heart of the city. Between gondolas, taxis, work boats, ferries, water buses, I'd say you dock and undock pretty frequently. Ora, pensate che un diportista in media usa l'invertitore un I'd say so. Now think about this. On average a yachtsman will do this maybe twice a day when he leaves the port and when he docks the boat. Maybe more if he really must refuel. On the other hand, how many times do you dock and undock? If I had to guess, hundreds of times. You really stress test it, the entire transmission chain, the whole propeller. This is why Volvo Penta, the Swedish headquarters, chose Fabio to test the new D4. The D4 is an inline four cylinder 3400cc turbo post refrigerated engine. Now, if we had to base our score on maths alone, five years of regular use of this vessel would compare to roughly 50 years of use for a regular pleasure boat. That's a lot, and it's a guarantee of durability and reliability. According to the Swedish constructor, this 150 horsepower engine has a medium consumption of 9 litres per hour at 2000 rpm. If this is true, Fabio, do modern diesel engines consume this little? Right now in the Canal Grande, we're using very little fuel. When you go to the airport and hit around 2,500 RPM, the fuel consumption will be much higher. So we have an average consumption of as little as 6 litres per hour. 6 litres per hour. Now, for us yachtsmen, burning less fuel is good. But for a professional who uses his boat for multiple hours every single day, it is vital. Truly vital. A new feature of this transmission is the electric steering. We've got only sensors and wires behind here. They transmit pulses straight to the stern drives, but the actuators convert the electric signals to steer the drives. Venice is beautiful, as is your speedboat taxi. You may be the Volvo Penta tester, but I don't think I want to leave just yet. I'd like to continue the test. May I? The helm is yours. You should know about this. I always conclude my tests by stepping down on the gas. At high speed. You ready? Let's go. Let's go.